Hello chess enthusiasts, my name is Miha and welcome to my chess royal on YouTube channel. We are still in the Norway Chess Championship. Let's go to the third round. We have a match between uh, Ariantari and Ian Nepomjaschi. So this was a Armageddon game, so a rapid game because the first game ended with a draw. Let's see what happened. Ariantari had white pieces and he started with e4, c5, knight to c3. And we have closed Sicilian on now d6, f4, g6 and uh, Knight to f3, bishop to g7, pretty much standard moves. And now white pass bishop to d5 check, bishop to d7 defending, and now bishop to c4. And now black develops his knight to c6, d3, and now knight to a5, targeting this bishop on uh, c4. Well, if white castles immediately, then we would probably have knight to c4, d pawn recaptures, bishop to c3, and now d pawn recaptures, and now we have this beautiful pawn chain out of three pawns doing nothing but obstructing themselves. So in the game, white plays bishop to d2, trying to save at least one double pawns, and now black plays e6, queen to e2, knight to e7, and now e5, attacking this unprotected pawn on d6, and knight goes to f5, defending the pawn. You might think that white can drive the knight away with g4, but then Follows knight to c4, d pawn recaptures knight to uh, d4, working these two pieces. So after knight to d4, c pawn captures, attacking this knight. So after maybe knight to e4, then queen to h4, check. Not to mention pawn on e5 is double attack, so maybe not the best continuation for white. So in the game, white plays bishop to b5. Now black plays d5, partially closing the center, and bishop captures on d7. Queen recaptures, and now we have this knight sacrifice on d5. E pawn recaptures, and now of course uh, bishop recaptures knight. So white has just gained a pawn, but not for long. Queen goes to b5, attacking bishop and uh, pawn on b2. So white plays bishop to c3, trying to defend the pawn on b2, but now black plays d4. And white bishop is forced to go to d2, and now queen captures on b2. So now material is equal. Black is also attacking pawn on c2, but white doesn't care and castles king side. Well, of course, if black captures, then we have rook from e goes to c1. When black removes the queen, then we have uh, either rook to c5, also queen to e4. Attacking this pawn on b7 is unpleasant. Well, even after queen to b2. Now white cannot uh, capture pawn on c5 because queen can capture rook then we would probably have uh, a4 and if black falls into the trap and we have rook from c goes to b1, queen to c2 is the only option and knight to e1 and queen is trapped. So in the game black first castles king side and now white plays queen to e4. Targeting this pawn on b7, yeah, black is also attacking pawn on c2, but first black plays b6, protecting pawn on uh, b5, and now white plays uh, g4. Well, of course, knight cannot go to e7, because then we have this f f5 pawn push, threatening with uh, f6, double attack on the both pieces. Well, black cannot place knight on f uh, c8, because then rook falls, and, uh, and c6 square is protected by the queen, so if black captures here or f5, then uh, g pawn recaptures, f6 is, still, f6 is still a threat, but after f6, then e pawn captures, bishop has to recapture, protecting the knight on e7, but then bishop to h6 win the exchange, why? Well, if black removes the rook to e8, then we have queen to e6, queen to uh, h8, queen to f6, queen to g8, and queen to g7, checkmate. So in the game, black plays knight to e3. Now this is a very strong outpost for the knight, so why doesn't has hesitate to capture uh, knight on e3, d pawn recaptures, and now uh, again we have these two pawns hanging, but why doesn't care, rook from a goes to e1. So, black accepts the challenge, queen captures on c2, and now we have this uh, f5 pawn push. If black captures on uh, a2, then we have this a6. Bishop cannot go to h6 because uh, g5 
5 traps the bishop. So here after uh, bishop to h8, then queen to e3, black would have to play queen to e6, but then queen to uh, h7 trap. Threatening with knight to g5 with checkmate on h7, so here black would have to sacrifice bishop on f6. After uh, pawn recaptures, queen recaptures, knight to g5, again threatening mate after queen to uh, g7, then queens are traded and rook goes to e7. Gaining also pawn on f7 with knight against two pawn, this is probably winning for white. Well, the correct continuation for black would be rook from a to e8. Now white cannot play the f6, well, because bishop captures and uh, white cannot recapture because uh, pawn on e5 is uh, pinned. And this would be the only option to defend the black king. In the black, uh, sorry, in the game, black plays rook to e8, but rook from f goes to e8. And now white plays e6, trying to break this uh, mini pawn chain around the king. Of course, if black captures on f5, then we have uh, e pawn captures of on f7, forking a king and rook. If king captures, then knight to uh, g5 check, after king to uh, g8, then queen to e5, king to h8, and now we have this uh, smothered mate uh, combination, queen to g8, rook to g8, knight to f7 check mate. In the game, black captures pawn on a2, and now black is uh, two pawns up, but in this position, white is winning, or should I say, there is a way for, for white to win. So the correct combination starts with knight to g5. The idea is to open the f file for the rook. If black makes a random move, then uh, we have f6. If bishop goes back to h8, then queen to uh, b7, threatening with mate on f7, rook to f7, f8 doesn't help. After that, e pawn captures on f7. If rook captures, knight captures, queen captures, and queen captures on a8, winning position for white. If, however, black captures on e6, then pretty much the same. We have f6. If bishop goes back to h8, then queen to b7, threatening with mate on f7, and on h7, again winning position for white. If black captures on f5, then queen recaptures, threatening with this. Uh, uh, queen to h7, rook to e6 doesn't help, after that queen to h7, king to f8, rook to f7, king to e8, queen to g8, and then maybe bishop to f8, but after queen captures is checkmate. And if, for example, black pushes f6, then knight to f7, totally trapping the king, threatening with knight to e6, attacking the rook, well, this rook also defends rook on a8, who happens to be defended by the queen, so... I don't know, black makes a random move, then knight to e6, I don't know, rook to d8, then, uh, then here white pushes e pawn, e pawn all the way to the end, gaining material uh, advantage. So here black would have to play, I don't know, rook from a to b8, but then we have rook to e3, again, threatening with attack on the h file, black would have to close the position, then probably f4. Black defense and after uh, h pawn captures, h pawn captures, then we have this knight to g5 sacrifice after uh, f pawn capture, then we have f6, a totally winning uh, position. Of course, if black removes bishop, then queen to g6 mate in the next move. Of course, if bishop captures, we have queen to g6, I don't know, bishop to g7, uh, queen to f7, king to uh, h7, and rook to h3 checkmate. So black is lost in all variations. Let's go back to our game. In the game, why didn't find the correct way? In the game, white played rook to e3. And now f pawn captures on uh, e6. Six pawn pushes uh, doesn't work anymore because f pawn is not protected. So uh, f pawn captures on g6. Well, of course, black can capture, but if black captures, then knight to uh, g5. Black cannot defend. Uh, black cannot defend uh, pawn on g6. For example, uh, if uh, black makes a random move, then queen to g6, threatening with mate here on uh, g7. So here black would have to 
for I this threat with rook to f8, but then rook to goes to f3 after rooks are traded. Again, black would have to play rook to f8, but again, rook captures on f8. Black can capture with either king or uh, bishop. If bishop captures, then queen to g g6. If king goes to h8, then queen to h7, checkmate. If bishop to g7, then, then queen to e8. Bishop to f8, queen to f7, king to h8, and queen to h7, checkmate. If king captures on uh, f8, then we have uh, queen to f4. Of course, again, if king goes to g8, then queen to f7, with mate in a couple of moves. King can then go either to e8 or e7. If king go to e8, then queen to f7, king to d8, knight to e6, check. Well, if king goes to c8, then queen to c7, checkmate. So here, black has no other option but to sacrifice a queen for a, a knight. And if king goes to e7, then queen to c7. If king goes to f8, then queen to f7, checkmate. And if king goes to e8, then queen to f7, king to d8, then knight to d6. Again, winning position for white. <coughs> so the bottom line is black cannot capture pawn on g6, so h6 was played. And now g5, trying to open additional piles. So black plays queen to d5, trying to exchange queens. Of course, white is a uh, pawn down, so white has to attack. Queen goes to h4, pressure on the h6 pawn. And now uh, queen to f5. Of course, now white cannot capture because then king captures with check. King to h8 and uh, queen to h6 still here, computer says that after queen to d4, white is threatening with rook to g8, so computer thinks it's a drone position as long as white creates enough, enough threats for black. So in the game, white plays queen to h5. The idea is h4, protecting pawn on g5, and then white can remove this knight, attacking the queen. So black plays rook to f8. Now h4 doesn't work anymore because then bishop to, uh, to d4, pinning this uh, rook, knight to d4 doesn't work because the, now queen goes to uh, f1 with mating 2. So in the game white plays rook to e4, protecting this uh, d4 square, also later we chance for rook to h4, well bishop to d4 doesn't work anymore because here white sacrificed the exchange after c pawn recaptures. Then we have uh, queen to h6 threat mate on uh, h7. So after uh, queen to g4 check, king to h1, rook to f3. Now comes rook to f1 attacking the queen after queen is uh, removed. Then queen to h7, king to f8. Now g7 check, maybe king to e7 and white promotes to queen uh, with check. So this again is a winning position for white. So in the game, black plays rook to f6, targeting this uh, pawn on g8. Of course, they cannot capture because queen on h5 is not uh, protected. So I plays rook to g4. And now uh, black is so much better and is actually winning. Could have played rook from a to f8, supporting uh, the f file, and then black could have easily captured pawn on g6. Instead, black makes a blunder and captures g pawn right away. And here was a chance for white to save the drone. We have this possibility of discover attack by the rook, and white should have played knight to e5, attacking the queen. Of course, queen cannot capture on g5 because queen captures on uh, g6. After queen captures, rook captures. And white has a white is a rook up. Okay, a rook for uh, three pounds, but this is winning for white. So here, black should have played queen to e5, and then queen captures uh, rook on uh, g6. And now white has a white is exchanged up, but black has two additional three pounds. So computer thinks it's a small advantage for white. But it was a rapid gain, and even grandmasters make blunder. White played knight to h4. He has forking his both pieces, but now black simply captures rook on uh, g4, checking queen, who is not protected. So 
after queen captures then rook captures and now queen is uh, pinned so after queen captures like g pawn sorry h pawn captures maybe even knight to f3 but then rook to f8 even if knight captures then rooks are traded and then black can play a5 and black needs one two three four uh, moves to promote to queen king cannot stop it neither can uh, knight and realizing his hopeless position here ariantari resigned the game so I hope you like this game and that you have learned something from it. If you have any questions, my email is below in the description. Of course, I invite you to visit my Instagram page. That's it for now and see you soon.